Kaisa, what is the mandate of PPAF? PPS mandate is to alleviate poverty in all its form, not only just means but also uh, of the mind, or the, to re-establish values uh, which have eroded uh, worldwide and also in our own country. And we, and providing opportunities to people for, for income, for livelihoods, for, uh, for voice, because we are in the business of, uh, we'd like to believe in social transformation, to give voice to those who have no, no voice, empower the, those who are marginalized in societies, who feel that they're, they're not included. So uh, that is the mandate of PPF. Right, right. So keeping in view this mandate, you have established this enterprise or employment centers. We also call them Nokri ya Karobar centers. Right. How does this NYK fit into the mandate of PPF? Like I said, one, uh, we are not a supply-driven institution. We have a whole range of, we have financial services and we have grant operations. And well, what we would, uh, what we want is for people to articulate their, uh, their demands through their institutions. So be it water or be it, you know, a road or things like that. And increasingly over the years uh, recently, there has been a huge demand for creating livelihood opportunities. So again, in response to the demand of the people, we have now, our program has, you know, in that sense, um, focused on livelihood opportunities for people. Because this is really with the demographics of Pakistan, with a youth bulge, with people who, you know, get degrees and then they don't have uh, an opportunity for work or for em employment. Uh, I think uh, PPF felt that this was really um, a very important need that needs to be addressed. And that's why this shift, and we have a range of innovations and a range of interventions uh, to help people find livelihood. If you look at the achievements of NYK, what has been the key value adds for PPAF from NYK experiment? From whatever we've seen so far, it's, it's shown that this has great promise and this is a low cost model that can actually also help the government in terms of leveraging their, their investments in the safety net because you know Pakistan can't afford to, to have a very large safety net program which is and also uh, you know five million households are pro being provided that now in terms of the future we need to think of graduating those people from safety nets to running their own enterprises you know having employment opportunities and this could really fill the gap between microfinance at one end and the safety net in the other so this is a very niche uh, our niche for this program is between those two Right. between the safety net, the 16 on the poverty scorecard, and perhaps our average, uh, you know, microfinance borrower is about 30 on the scorecard. So the gap between 16 and 30, this is an ideal situation. Right. And this will show to government that, you know, there is a graduation model. Well, 76 centers, 20,000 registrations, 5,000 plus employed. Is this enough in view of the scale of unemployment in Pakistan? No, obviously it's not enough, but like I said that we always start small and uh, I'm a, you know, people may disagree with me, I'm a great believer in actually starting small, learning the process, ironing out the rough spots, seeing where changes need to happen and once we know our business, then going to scale. So on everything that you see that we do, we start small. So we would like to believe that this is the in a way, a start of a journey of building the livelihood sector, uh, investing in these institutions, because the best learning happens when you're doing it. Well, Kaisab, thank you. That's really great to know that uh, you plan to scale up and you realize that given the enormity of the situation, the current scale of operations of NYK is not enough. What is the vision of NYK that you see in future? I mean, I think this can go so many places. This is like a from what I've seen from the 76, I've visited a few of them as well. I think, first of all, I think it will, we need to link these NYKs themselves, learning from each other. I think one of the things that, that uh, we have not invested in is the people, we've not invested in people, we've not invested in mentoring, we have not invested in, in providing people with, with guidance, with you know, counseling, with what, those are the kind of things that all other civilized 
countries invest in, right from the, from a school, the guidance counselor to employment centers. So I feel that I think we need to, to build that whole, what should I say, ecosystem uh, that in terms of the future. Collaboration is happening, mentoring is happening, linkages are happening in terms of, okay, so these, I have great hopes for the future for this. And I would like our, all other initiatives to then feed, feed into each other. For instance, you know, like I said, take the ones that are on the safety nets, bring them to, uh, to, to the asset transfer program, bring, provide them with the Prime Minister's interest-free loan, and then maybe two or three years later, they can, once they start their business, we can you know, link them up to our mainstream financial services. So there is a vision in terms of graduating these people out. But I think all of these wonderful interventions, and that's the, you know, the, uh, the frustration sometimes where there are a lot of good things happening, but they're not happening together. If problems of this country are huge, the only way we can solve those problems are through collaborative efforts and say, okay, what is your strength? What is our strength? What do we bring to the table? The microfinance uh, example is a, is a very beautiful one because governments, civil society, PPF, state bank, the regulator, all came together and we did it. And it was never about who did it. It was, you know, we, our focus was on the outcome, that people should have access to financial services. It was not about our flag or somebody else's flag. And I think this, that is so important is to, you know, go in with this with humility, with a, with a, with a sense of that I'm also learning in this process and I'm here to assist and I'm here to, to, to do all that I can to make a difference in people's life. But at the end of the day, the people should feel that they have done it. They have been empowered and that whole philosophy is very much encapsulated in the NYK approach that people themselves feel empowered that these are our centers and we are here to help you. We will never walk in front of you, we will walk behind you. And that is what, so the success of the NYK will depend on the people who run those NYKs.